Good morning. What I'd like to do is to uh, uh, call the uh, meeting of the airport commission to order here. And I've asked David Feltman, one of our new members, if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, David. Uh, before we go on, just to make a, a note, um, Today is 9-11. It's one of those days I'm sure that all of us remember vividly and we know where we were and what we were doing. But I didn't know if anybody wanted to make, on the commission, make any comments or just to recognize today is 9-11, very horrific event in our history. Pardon me? Yes. Pardon me? All right. How about a moment of silence? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's proceed with our agenda. Um, has the agenda been posted? It has, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Roll call, Nadia. Commissioners Adams. Here. Altman. Breslin. Present. Burke excused. Budigo. Present. Clarkson. Here. Corcoran. Here. Dada. Here. Feltman. Here. Freeman. Here. Hedrick. Here. Hearn. Here. Hughes here. Patterson here. Pye. Recent excused Schmitz here. Swero here. And Jones here. Thank you. We have a, a quorum. Uh, any, want to move for the acceptance of the agenda or any additions or changes? So moved. Okay. Second. In favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Brings us to public comments. We've had one request today from Jeffrey Bernstein. Would remind uh, Mr. Bernstein it's limited to three minutes on any subject within the purview of the commission. So, Jeffrey. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Chairman Jones, Dr. Nolan, Dr. Reggie, commissioners. A special welcome to the new commissioners. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Jeffrey Bernstein. I own a local business destination, ESB. We're a retail and wholesale business that brands and promotes the whole Coachella Valley. We partner with 14 different local events and nonprofits as well. Um, as I've said before, I think this is one of the best airports in the whole country in terms of locale, friendliness, ease of use, um, and attractiveness. However, I think as many of us agree, the retail and food and beverage uh, needs improvement. Uh, we've had the same operators for a number of decades, and, and I think I understand there is a move to make some changes. Um, as we've seen in many airports across the country, the trend is towards more local, towards more food and beverage and retail that actually represents the community, um, that creates a better customer experience, that increases revenue, and they also serve for other things such as getting people to the airport earlier to who want to have that experience. Now, as I understand it, there is the RFP will be coming out soon, um, and I'll have to go to the City Council for review. My point today is to just sort of encourage that we understand the timing of this. Um, for any new person who would be coming into an airport, the process is somewhat daunting. Um, and in order to have, whether it's new big companies or new small companies participate, um, it's important for them to not only understand the RFP process, but um, to have time to prepare. Now, at the business subcommittee and retention meeting last night, um, Dr. Reddy in the city did suggest that perhaps there would be some city assistance for new people coming into the RFP process. Um, I would also just sort of point out for any new retailer or business, it takes a number of months to be able to move into a new space. Big companies can do so in a matter of a few months. Anybody, any smaller business or new, someone new to the airport would take a significant amount of time, especially if there's issues about new building or new construction, which I know is a possibility. Um, so I think in order to have, by having more time, you want to ensure that you have the best applicants possible um, in all the areas. And thank you. That's what I wanted to speak about. And uh, thank you for letting me do so. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. We go next to the approval of the minutes of the meeting of July the 10th. If you've had a chance to review them, is there any motion for acceptance? Or? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain? Abstain. All right. 
you weren't here at the meeting. No, no abstentions. Okay. No, okay. Okay, was two abstentions. Okay, we come now to the chairman report. First of all, uh, welcome back. We have a very exciting year, I think, ahead of us uh, with all of our capital projects and everything else coming along. I'd also like to do a special welcome to our new commissioners. We actually have four new commissioners. Gerald Adams, of course, is new. Uh, Paul Bidillo. Uh, and let's see, Todd Burke, who's not able to be here today. I guess just the three. Just the three? No, David. 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 Sorry, David. <laughs> I had you checked here. It's just we've met so already. We've talked. I feel like we've known each other for a long time here. So, okay, we've been at meeting. Um, typically, we do uh, three introductions at each meeting. Um, we have a heavy agenda this morning, so rather than doing three introductions of you know giving our background, we're just only going to do one, and that's going to be me. Uh, I'm going to do it very quickly. First of all, let me ask how many commissioners have a um, uh, uh, private pilot's license? I do. Am I the only one? Yeah. Well, well, okay. Well, son of a gun. I thought there would be more. No, he's not here. No, yeah. Bill's not here. He does yeah. have one. Well, very quickly, um, my career was in higher education administration uh, from 1970 until 2010. Um, my last job was with the California State University, Office of the Chancellor, where I was in charge of all student academic support for 23 campuses. That is, I, I managed to work with the provosts as well as the Vice President of Student Affairs for all 23 campuses. I helped to bring up three campuses, CSU Monterey Bay, Channel Islands, and San Marcos. And then I was also chairman of a Congressional Advisory Committee on Student Financial Aid. It was an 11-member panel. I enjoyed that for about uh, five or six years. Uh, I was appointed by both Presidents Bush and Obama, uh, so bipartisan, and I was chairman of it for that about six years, and that uh, developed financial aid policy, much of which is in existence today. Um, and I've done a lot of things with the state, making the Cal Grant an entitlement program. We did that in the 90s. And then after that, I was asked to actually uh, um, go back to Washington, D.C. for five years uh, in 2010 to help implement new standards in English language, arts, and mathematics called the Common Core standard, State Standards. And I worked with 27 states for five years doing that. Uh, and in joint California successfully implemented the new standard that is going to have a great deal of impact on the state uh, as well as other states because they're very rigorous um, uh, uh, standards from K through, through 12 which is very good. And then most recently, I was asked by the state of California to be a project director for a Bill and Melinda Gates grant uh, for the state of California, working uh, with the University of California, the California State University, California Community Colleges, California Department of Education, and 82 independent colleges and universities, as well as EDD, the Employment Development uh, Department, So, um, and working with the governor. So that's what I've been doing for the last few months. What I was going to share very quickly with you, so that's kind of my background, that's where we come from. Uh, uh, is when I got my private pilot's license, there was a, um, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, this is it. When you get your private license, there's a kind of a tradition of taking the shirt that's on your back at the time, which I wasn't expecting to solo that day. I soloed actually in 1983 at Hemet Airport. Took off from the Revens Airport, we got to Hemet, and the instructor said, I'm getting out, I want you to do three touch and goes which is really, really scary. I said, I'm not ready. He said, yes, you are. I think I had seven or eight hours I don't, um, under my belt. And he got out of the plane and said, just take off and go. And actually, as you can see, because I, I guess I was very happy with my third landing, I said my third landing was perfect. Clearly, the first and the second one were a little less than perfect. Uh, but if, if ever you've done anything, it was exhilarating to have that kind of flexibility and freedom and to take off uh, for the first time by yourself. So this is my, my log, uh, first page that shows when I did it, my pilot's license at the time. And I used to enjoy flying to Catalina, San Diego, Santa Barbara, Las Vegas, all, all sorts of different places, uh, particularly Catalina, because it was the most challenging. In those days, uh, jet aircraft, the small ones were going off the end of the runway. The runway goes up, and then it goes down, and it begins at a cliff. So there's an optical illusion, so a lot of people land downfield and have enough time to land, and they go off the other end. Anyway, so I thought I would just share that with you this morning. So I was very proud of that achievement. So there we go. So now you can add that I've done mine. Uh, but starting with the next meeting, we'll pick up um, probably, well, we'll do three more. Uh, but we have a heavy agenda this morning, so we'll continue to move forward on that. Um, let me turn now to any introductions or presentations. I do, Mr. Chairman. Lights, Mark? Two items of interest is sustainability. We have installed air, the first airport's self 
biofilling stations. There are three of them throughout the terminal complex. This will help reduce the use of plastic bottles in water, make it more convenient for the passengers, and just it's a nice trending feature. Another, any questions, comments? Didn't Good. San Francisco Airport today are in the process of banning? They banned all of them. They banned all of them. We're on to the next topic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we better, for the moment, uh, okay, uh, yeah, stick with that. that that's right. a completely different topic of its own. <laughs> now, looking at this photo, you should get very excited, because I do. That black area, we applied another layer of fog sealant to, if you recall, about three and a half years ago, we actually did the entire rehabilitation of our terminal apron. And it's recommended every three years-ish to make sure we keep that beautiful pavement, $11 million piece of pavement, covered with fog seal. So when you see that, you know there's a lot at work. It's going to save the airport a lot of funding in the long run because it extends the useful life of the pavement, Mr. Chairman. And that concludes my report. All right. Well, thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. Uh, we move on now to the city manager report. Mr. Reddy. Well, I guess I just want to clarify with Tom that those of you, we don't have a lot of fog here. <laughs> but it's yeah. fats, oil, and grease, not fog, right? Yeah. So it's for fats, oil, and grease. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So what, what I, there is one issue that I want to raise with everyone, uh, and it's not on your agenda because just the timing didn't work in terms of uh, getting the agenda posted. Uh, so there's nothing for you to vote on, but I can take your feedback and input to uh, a matter I need to take to council, and that's with regard to uh, earthquake insurance for the airport. So in summary fashion, as we talked prior, uh, right now the city has a $5 million deductible and a $10 million policy for all buildings in the entire city, oh. which is woefully inadequate. Now, Basically, this is a, an issue, a function of the cost prohibitiveness of earthquake insurance. That being said, what we did a few years ago is, for the wastewater treatment plant, that there are certain facilities that are going to be critical. Uh, obviously, the wastewater facility is one. So we have a separate policy for the wastewater treatment plant at $25 million in addition to that, which was a good thing. Now, we got that policy when the policies were much less expensive. So what I suggested to council when they approved the insurance program this year, we should try and do the same thing for the airport as we discussed previously. Because of the recent seismic activity, the cost to do that for the airport is about $800,000 a year in premium, which is you know, just probably not anything that we can do. That being said, the alternative was to add another $12 million layer on top of our current $12 million, $10 million. And in the event of an earthquake and this building is severely damaged, we could earmark that entire 12 million, so to speak, 22 million to the airport. So the question is, council, would you be willing to do that? And that premium was 340,000 approximately. So we were looking and we got a, a, a quote of 330,000 uh, dollars and it's only good till about the, the 28th of this month. Uh, so at the meeting next week, I need to ask City Council, do you want to go ahead and do this additional coverage? Now, this would be coming from your reserves. So it's a, it's a big number, and I don't know whether City Council will want to do it or not. They're sort of mixed. They, they, they know we need more coverage, but this is a high cost. So at this point, Mr. Chairman, I guess the threshold question for here is not that you're going to vote on it. Uh, if we would have been able to agendize it in time, we would have. Uh, and we need to decide this before your next meeting. But I certainly can take your feedback uh, because this will be coming from your fund balance. So any uh, discussion and feedback you want to give me, I would be happy to. And, and what would be the amount of the premium that would come from our? It would be 330 Now, uh, the full amount would come. I suspect council will want the full amount to come from the airport, but then that means the airport would have coverage. So in the event it would be required, the additional uh, $12 million would be Can I ask, can I ask a question still? Basically, what you're saying, it comes on top of what the city has now. So let's say uh, we have a quake. The airport does not get damaged, but the city-wide, you need the additional, <coughs> basically, we are paying, the, we, the airport, are paying so for something that the city benefits. Then at that point, it would be legitimately, the general fund would reimburse the airport fund. 
we, we probably have to do that under FAA rules, just to avoid an audit finding, in my estimation. That's the only one. So yeah. yeah. Is there any coverage on the, uh, through uh, the FAA? No. no. Yeah, I was going to ask that same no, question. There's not. No. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, if we have an earthquake, I mean, we're so close to City Hall. This building's going to be badly damaged too. I mean, I cannot imagine this building, unless it's really built to extreme standards, would not survive. Would survive in City Hall. Would. Uh, I mean, personally, I mean, I just up my earthquake insurance on my home. Uh, I think it's critical that we do it because this is our lifeline. Uh, the airports are a lifeline uh, for the valley. Oh, no, I, I, I agree. We need it. I'm just saying maybe the city should kick in some of that. That's what I'm saying. Dr. Reddy, maybe I can share with this group that currently at the Hilton, we have a in-house convention called Southern California Earthquake Center. And we have 540 scientists from all over the world. And I had the pleasure to have dinner with the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center on Friday. And I posed him a question. How far our fault line is pregnant? He said 16 months. That's how far <laughs> we are in trouble. And, and definitely yesterday he said he would like to come over and do a good presentation next time he's in town to the Greater Palm Springs Convention and visit to the Bureau to educate mm. how far and how deep this issue is. That's, that's insightful. A question, hey. what, if there's an earthquake and the runway itself mm -hmm. gets, what, who covers that? Earthquake insurance would not cover that, would it? It would, it would, it would, it would cover that as well? I mean, you have, to just presume, buildings in. you have to presume, depending on the severity of it, that you're going to have some outside assistance. And, and, and presuming the highways are busted, that's going to be your only way in. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have you know, federal emergency and state to get the runway right, open. Right. So my sense is whatever money we have, we probably have to go more into the building. Now, again, who, who knows what exactly would happen. Exactly. Any other thoughts or comments? Anyone? Can questions? we have a sub-policy? So that way we are more have a, a, a sub policy earthquake. Separate. So separate. I mean associated so by separate. Could, so that except way. except uh, the the benefit is to having it on all the buildings. Yeah. It's a three hundred and thirty thousand dollar premium. A separate twenty five million dollar premium just for the airport was about eight hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tom, how much reserves do we have currently? Well, we have enough reserves to carry the airport for about half of its fiscal year, but in the catastrophic well, that amount is what about nine, to about ten nine to ten million. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, we have some other reserves that are mandatory under the signatory agreements with the airlines. But in a catastrophic event, clearly the, the structural aspects of the airport would be the prime concern of that as well. I would highly recommend that, uh, knowing we do have the reserves. 340,000 in the scheme of things is minuscule to what will it take to substitute and replace the damage to this building. So I would like to see and uh, we recommend. Well, we can't recommend. It wasn't on the agenda. We're just giving feedback. But yeah, I, let me feedback. get a sense. Yeah, let me get a sense from the, the other commissioners. Are you supportive of this? I mean, we're not taking a vote, but to give feedback to... to to David to go to the city council. And just to, okay. just to clarify, this is just a one one annual premium. Correct. So this Correct. is just the one time that it would have to be renewed, or it's automatic renewal. No, no, no it would be. It would, we have the same issue to deal with next year, but but obviously we do that in a more uh, sooner deliberative way. Right. Is the premium locked in for how many years? One year, just one year. Just one, just one year. Question: Is there a process for doing a seismic evaluation of the risks at the airport? Um, as opposed to the earthquake comes and we find out what's most what's been most vulnerable. Um, I'm not opposed to three hundred thirty thousand dollar expenditure. I'm just worry, worry, wondering if we can do a pre-event assessment of what our biggest risks are. Well, what, what I can't tell you, it's a good question. So when, to get this quote, our broker, um, they, they actually had to come out and, and do what their their initial assessment. 
So uh, can they do a deeper one? I suspect so. I can make inquiries on that. But they did have to do an initial assessment for them to even be able to give Come us a quote. Yeah. But do you have a time limit on September 28th? Uh, yeah, for this quote. Otherwise, it, you know, potentially it could go up. So, so that, that's that's the urgency of, of getting to council on the 18th. And so, you're taking that for action to the city council? Uh, yes. Now, I think what you could do is what I'm hearing is uh, I, I would merely just say that the the commission didn't vote on it. It wasn't on their agenda. They were generally supportive, but I think we should add the proviso and the important proviso that if there is an earthquake and the dollars are not spent at the at the airport, uh, then the general fund would reimburse the airport fund for that premium. Okay. And you'll make that clear? Yep. Okay. My sense from the nods and the body language and the rest that there's pretty much consensus to, to support that, David. So uh, Thank I you, think. Mr. Chairman. Thank but you. The, do you have any other items on your report? Uh, no, the only other thing that caveat is sort of uh, what Optop indicated is talking with the, the physicists that are the. the the earthquake specialist. What my, my sense of all this is all you have to do is look outside to these mountains and, and you know how they got there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I remind people of that, yes. I was born and raised in Redlands. I remember the Tehachapi earthquake in 52 that threw me out of bed. So, okay. I was four years old, so I might you. add. But, uh, yeah, there's, we are. That's other real. <laughs> that's all of thrusts. Uh, very good. David, one quick question, I, and I, I think it's later in the report too, but um, the City Council was going to act on Ju uh, July 24th about the ticket wing remodeling as well as the new seats for the Bono Concourse, and I believe they did that. Uh, yes, the staff reports Okay, we'll get to that. several others. Okay, Indeed. right, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Okay, I just, that just was, uh, I know, on others' minds. All right, moving to the budget and finance report, sir. Thank you. Mark, could you stand up and... Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the Commission. It's uh, early in the season. Uh, we are, of course, looking at the numbers through August, and, and we all know that our revenue typically for July and August are, are not uh, certainly at peak. But so far this year, on page one of the revenues, you can see they're, they're tracking very well. Uh, the Accounting Department and Finance Group has, has posted things in a very timely fashion with their revenues, and most of those are up significantly compared to last year. Uh, I want to point out the lease parking uh, revenue, which is up about 124000 year to date, uh, in part primarily with the significant increase in the rates that we had, which was fully supported by the Commission, and that is tracking as we anticipated. So uh, the revenues are looking very strong for the year. Um, next month, we will uh, be looking more closely at expenses, because on page two, many of the expenses and the allocations for the current year have not yet been posted. Again, it's a timing issue We're early in the month, and those things will catch up as we get into um, September and October. I did want to point out, though, on page three, we have the analysis for our, the, the bottom of the page for our funds, the CFC restricted funds. Uh, last year at this time, we were just over 19 million. Uh, right now, we have 22 million in our CFC fund, which is going to be used for our rental car projects and the improvements in that area. So those have increased significantly since last year. The PFC uh, funds, even though we've paid off all our old bonds, we have nearly $2 million in reserves in our PFC account at this juncture. Uh, our capital restricted is just over $9 million. And then the airport unrestricted, the 415 account is at $9.1 million. So uh, we have significant or ample money to pay for the uh, the insurance as necessary, and as we move forward, we're uh, in good shape with our revenues and our cash flows and our fund balances. Thank you, Mark. Any questions for Mark? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, then we move on to the next agenda item, which is, um, we have three items actually, discussion and action items. We'll start with the new art on loan. Uh, you have in your packet, it's a recommendation from the Public Arts Commission to install a piece here called A Tale of Survival in the Face of Crushing Inertia. I, I actually had a chance to, to look. We have the artists here today as well. Um, and I don't know, Tom, if you would like to talk from the standpoint of the staff analysis? Well, I would perhaps recommend that you have the artist take a few minutes. I and plan to, but okay. I'll see if you had any comments first. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll do that yeah, first. I would, I'd recommend that. We have uh, Russell Pritchard. Um, Ann Sheffer is the chair of the Public Arts Commission. She and I have had a lot of communication back and forth, um, and we know each other pretty well as 
So we have you, uh, uh, Bruce. I mean Russell. Do you want to take the lead on this and introduce the artists? And... Good morning, commissioners. Dr. Reddy. My name is Russell Pritchard, Thompson Public Art Commission. Uh, Linda Maxson is one of the two artists from Crushing Inertia. So this is a proposal that we brought to you just as a uh, informational presentation back in the June or July meeting. Uh, it's a project that we and the Arts Commission are funding in full, all of the artist fee and the installation costs, and supervising the whole project. Hopefully it will be one of many that we will be doing with the airport uh, going forward. But we wanted to just get your nod of approval for this. We are going to do our formal approval at our meeting tomorrow on Thursday, and then it will go to the city consent calendar for the installation. So it's on loan, temporary, October through uh, October 2019 to the end of April 2020 would be the time period. And both Linda and Debbie are local artists, and our mission and the Arts Commission is to support our local talent as much as we can. So it's a great opportunity for all of us. Great, thank you. Any questions for Russell? I'd like yeah. to notice the cost cover maintenance and what maintenance might be needed to keep the current period. Uh, oh yes, all, all of our uh, installations and murals that we do in the city have a maintenance budget in it, and that's the responsibility of us working with the artists to do any maintenance required during the six-month installation period. So there's no cost to the airport at all that our airport commission has to work on? It's all fully funded by the Public Arts Committee? Yes, sir. Um, I noticed the, uh, the location of the art mm -hmm. piece is right next to the entrances and in the, in the hallway. Is that going to be impede the, uh, the traffic flow? Oh, well, you know, that Especially was... During the, peak, uh, during the peak period? That was proposed. I've actually had conversations with Ann as well. Um, I personally think it would be easier, and Tom can speak to this too, better to be in the regional concourse, quite frankly. It would get more visibility than it would be, and yes, it could. And does Tom, do you want to speak yeah, to that? That's, that, that is true. Uh, here's the art piece itself, and... There's the art piece. There'll be two pieces, and I believe the dimensions are three feet by nine feet tall. The, the lobby is the busiest junction in the airport. There's no doubt about that. It'll, we're 15% over last year's right. traffic. It's going to even, and this picture isn't really representative of how busy it can get. So there's no doubt that uh, I'm not sure it would do the justice art to have such a congested area where people park their luggage in front of it and yeah. people are leaning up against it talking on the cell phone. So the regional concourse, for years we've been thinking about how, uh, how it's reminiscent of a library. <laughs> it would be nice to introduce some level of art to really uh, take that up a notch. We have art in the Bono concourse. We have art throughout the entire terminal complex. And there seems to be no better location to be able to have that there. Right. Now, in your report on 11A, uh, page 11A, you'll see the uh, litany of different art pieces throughout the airport. We have photos of all of them there. This art piece certainly would be a complement to the already nice array of art that has graced this airport for many, many years. So, Mr. Chairman, I leave it up to the Commission. Okay. I think we just have to have more discussion about the appropriate location. Uh, I think, and I've had a conversation with Ann as well, uh, the Chair of the Public Arts right. Commission. Yeah. And, and honestly, I, I fly out of here almost weekly, as a matter of fact, and sometimes twice a week, almost always out of the regional concourse. That mm -hmm. gets so much visibility down yes. there. It would be, I think, a great opportunity for it. Throughout the year. Forth. Throughout the year. Yeah, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we make a recommendation accordingly? Yes, we could. I the, move. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to move that we, um, that we approve the uh, art installation, uh, but do so in the, morning, uh, in the, sorry, in the regional concourse. Second. Second to that? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Very good. So you can report that we've fully endorsed it, but to the regional members. Okay. Great. Uh, the next item we go to is the car rental project design. Um, you have that in your packet as well. Uh, this actually talks about engaging the, the firm of Gensler and Associates. Um, I was on the SOQ. Who else? Oh, not here. When mm -hmm. you rotate it off, mm -hmm. Tom was there. David, of course, was there. I think too. But uh, we had done that a couple of years ago. So there's a recommendation before you 
uh, in terms of authorizing a purchase order in order to move forward with the, uh, the schematic design services um, from Gensler. But let me turn to Tom to give us any back Thank information. You, Thank you. Just to uh, elaborate on what you were saying, uh, Gensler has a very rich history at the Palm Springs International Airport. They were the design firm for the Bono Concourse, the iconic Bono Concourse, a remodel of the courtyard and a semi-rehabilitation of the terminal and regional concourse as well. So they are well versed, they're well known, and their reputation precedes them around the, uh, around the world, actually. Now, Mr. Chairman is correct, a couple of years ago, there was a nationwide solicitation for projects. As you know, the, the airport has a very aggressive five-year capital program, which at first involved a ticketing hall. By the way, that has been awarded by council, and we are working very diligently to get that project underway. So uh, in that selection process, each of the three firms that were selected had a specific level of capital items that were assigned to them. And one of them, T. Gensler, if you recall in their presentation, was very impressive in regards yes. to car rental facility. Yes, very impressive. So th this is an, if not an arbitrary thing, it's a very direct thing through a nationwide solicitation. For the last, uh, actually, two years, there's been uh, a scope development uh, a, a very detailed, very intense scope development that uh, was developed with actually another firm prior to Gensler, but that firm's uh, expiration of their term with the city uh, expired. So we took that scope, which was a product of about 12 works, uh, uh, months worth of work, and then gave that to Gensler, and we whittled down from there to determine what we could do best to get this project underway. Now, I think the most important part of this project is to understand what you're voting on today is just the schematic phase. For those of you that are familiar with that, we'll take it up to about 30% design and work very closely with all of the car rental stakeholders and other players within the city and so forth to determine what is an acceptable architectural palette and more importantly, what is its functionality. So that schematic process is really where you roll up your sleeves and determine what will be built and so forth. So this is schematic only. Once schematic is approved by City Council and the uh, Architectural Advisory Commission and so forth and the Airport Commission, it will have to then segue into design development, which is a more intense part of the project where they really get down to the designing and so forth. So uh, with that being said, I provided a lot of data here and I'm going to Mark, please. Thank you. In the report itself, uh, going back to the master plan is really the, the brainchild of all of this. This is not something anyone thought up. It was a product of the master plan. In the master plan, it looked at our terminal area. The number one priority is to carry out our aviation-related functions, which we're doing, and we identified the ticketing area as a project. We also identified that because the car rental <coughs> has such a significant presence here at the airport, it needed to be accommodated in a more efficient way. Now, uh, transactions for car rentals, as you can see, since 2014 to 18, we've increased from 202,000 all the way up to 235,000. Now, ironically, one would intuitively think with the introduction of ride share that there would probably be a difference in that trending, but that doesn't seem to be changing much at this point, and it's very difficult to really pinpoint that. So, working under the assumption that car rentals will continue to grow. We've got to address it in a very equitable and intelligent fashion. By the way, everyone knows from a budgetary process it's our number one source of revenue. The car rentals have actually told us that PSP Airport has one of the highest rates of car rentals per passenger than anywhere in the country. That's because of the world destination, the attractiveness of destination, and of course, golf courses. So as we look at that, the current facility I went on in the roof the other day, this is not peak season, but uh, I took a photo. This is the current ready return lot. There's 279 spaces appropriated for car readiness, and then 164 spaces coming off of LCLO uh, to be able to return the vehicles. I can tell you with great certainty, because every one of the management staff in this room, including myself, have been out there actually shuttling cars around during peak season. It can get very congested. So the crux of the project centers around utilizing that area, but this old hangar from the 60s needs to be removed. It's, it's not really used for anything other than 
uh, the, the customs and, and currently the USO. Both of those will be relocated within the scope of this program. So as you can see, during the peak time, the, the master plan said in order for our baggage claim area to function in accordance with FAA standards, and the FAA has standards looking at the peak time demand and the number of linear feet of the baggage belt. How can that work better? Well, as you can see here in the photos, during that peak time, it's very difficult because of the amount of baggage people are uh, <coughs> averaging and carrying around. The only way to achieve that is to move the car rental ticket counters and offices out of the bag claim area. That will allow enough depth to that area without adding to the building to be able to re debilitate and remodel the entire bag claim area, put in state-of-the-art, maybe oval carousels that can handle double stack luggage and felt uh, bags as well. So in order to achieve that, it's going to require Gensler to do additional forecasting. The master plan was done five to six years ago. It's that old already. So that data is going to have to be right out of the box reconfirmed. Gensler is going to knuckle down part of the scope is to reanalyze the master plan's analysis, if that makes sense. In that analysis, the stakeholders are going to provide fresh and new input to be able to determine if the original uh, <coughs> car level scope uh, predicted that there was a need of about 860 spaces in the parking structure through all the way through 2028. We need to reconfirm that. And based on the trends we're seeing, that number may not be good anymore. It may require, who knows, Mr. Chairman and, and Commission, it could require more. Maybe we discover something in that process, it could be less. This is just a schematic that actually Gensler showed in their presentation. And I know there were some other architectural things, but here, our main terminal complex, baggage claim, and in this area, that limited area out there is where we have to actually construct that facility. Now, Many years ago, the city manager and city council were involved in a, the master plan process. The idea of a remote car rental facility was discussed, but it was not appropriate at Palm Springs International Airport. The car rentals did not support it because they, they believe the annual reoccurring expense of a, a shuttle is too much, and they don't like to mix brands. They don't like to have a shuttle where you have somebody from Hertz and Avis sitting across the aisle sharing perhaps what they paid for a car rental. And neither did City Council uh, support that either because they believe what makes PSP Airport so special is the ability to have the convenience. Some people say shuttle is convenient, but others say the, the reality is you got to shut luggage back on, back off again, and it wasn't, it wasn't convenient. Do we save our questions until later? Or? That's up to the chair. Well, let me finish with the presentation first. Yeah, because we were just at, at, at one illustration that I wanted to talk about. Go ahead. And uh, the, the question and, and maybe concern I have uh, with the location, the way it is, uh, it, in my opinion, would inhibit us from ever extending the baggage yeah. claim area. Very good observation. Let me let me interrupt you. This is just a, this, this is really a poor schematic. Okay. The master plan clearly identifies the need either to extend that baggage claim area. So the way that is showing, it doesn't look like okay. it's possible. Well, it's I was re I was, at me. yeah, that's great observation. I was reluctant to put that in, and I even said to him, "So come on." But uh, the reality is that's going to have to go over more toward the hangar. We've got to be at 15, 20 years from now when that is necessary. You're absolutely right. That will be preserved. Great observation. Uh, well, I thought I had some more. I, I attached in the report. The I, I think just really quickly. Do you want to get it? Oh, go ahead. The distal, the previous. Just remind us in terms of the revenue that we get from it, right? The main, and then you, over the course of the 14 years, it would be fully paid for. So I think that's just an important thing to know. It is. Yes. We're in a great financial position right, right now with about 22 <coughs> million. Plus, the state uh, authorizes airports to change the $10 per transaction fee if necessary to bond. But we're estimating uh, something that is affordable within that. Uh, listen, I, I would refer everybody, I'm sure you spent last night till midnight reading the report you've had uh, almost a week with it. I'm sure you did. You did, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So I, I, we provided a lot of information, and it's not showing, I'm just showing the constant report here, but I would say that this is a great step. We're very excited about it. Everyone else should be, and, and uh, I think it's a great start and, and a new, exciting new project, okay. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mark? Okay.
Hopefully all of you did take the time to read this in advance. It's a very thorough report. Yep, good. Lots of nods. This is a very good thing. So, any questions for Tom about this? We, we have uh, the two recommendations here um, to move forward with. So, any questions? Leading clarification. Well, uh, yeah. since, since we're updating the data mm -hmm. and projection, we also have to keep in mind uh, technology, uh, self-driving vehicles, you know, all the technology involved with the car rental facilities to expedite the service and, you know, congestion, to reduce mm -hmm. congestion and to make a better customer experience and more efficient and, you know, so that we have to keep all that in mind in throughout this. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments, thoughts? Where would the USO and the uh, Customs go? With the new building or just somewhere? Well, the US Customs, we've been working with them for two years, and on the north end of the airport, there are two hangars. <coughs> the US Customs would be built between those two hangars. They have approved the site. They believe it provides more security, more autonomy. Currently, the US Customs is overwhelmed and limited to their aircraft parking. parking because of the small apron and the, the size of the growth of the airport. So this would be a perfect location. The fiscal aspect of the CFCs will pay for it. It's a legitimate cost, and that is part of the Gensler scope. Is it also possible just for repurposing in a 15, 20 year period because of technology or uh, scenario changes, it is becoming remote parking. That mm -hmm. could be also used as a parking garage yes. in the future. That could be, but state law does say if you spend CFCs on it, it has to be used. But you're right, by then we may have okay. mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. means of transportation. If it defaults mm -hmm. to a non-utilization, I'm sure something could be worked mm -hmm. out. I do want to mention something from an environmental standpoint, mm -hmm. as far as noise. Uh, we do over 200,000 and 223,000 transactions a year with car rentals. Hundreds of thousands of vehicles are running between the car rental facility near Sun Sunmore neighborhood, back and forth. Hundreds of thousands. In this project, not only a parking deck, we will incorporate a fueling station yes. and car wash to then eliminate probably 75%, if not more of that. So you could you can rest assured from an airport compatibility standpoint that the abutting neighborhoods will be very happy by the time this project is So maintenance would be the only offside. That's affirmative, yeah. Maintenance of oil change or if there's damage to the vehicle. But they'll be able to get over car wash right behind the facility. And fuel. And fuel and then ready to go. And it's also better for the passengers because they have more vehicles to be able to choose from. And electrical vehicle charge. And electrical vehicle <laughs> charge. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Kevin? And so, Tom, what is the timeline? When would you hope to have this completed? And what, the, the what we're showing, uh, the Agua Caliente tribe with their casino downtown built a similarly sized 850 space. It took them eight months to construct, albeit it didn't have a customer service hall in that. So based on the schedule we're looking at, if things run smoothly, we could be looking at a three-year-ish, give or take, a half a year period. But construction appears to be go pretty well with contractors on parking facilities right now. And we're doing an analysis of nationwide. Uh, we've got a couple Air Force that we know have built and we're looking at that as well as using that as a template. So again, in USO, Thomas? The USO will be migrating back near in within the terminal area in a location yet to be determined because uh, we feel that that is more appropriate. And whether or not we can duplicate the space wall, we, that's part of the design process with Gensler to make sure that they're taken care of. Do we have any idea of where? Yet to be determined in the schematic. But, but, but it's going to be in this terminal. It, it, it is, it's part of an addition to the terminal or part of the terminal that is there now? Either or, now. or both. It could be a combination of both. <coughs> okay, so where is it going to be in the interim? They will provide temporary facilities and modular facilities is the way or perhaps look at an alternative destination. But in in the design spec for Gensler, they're to provide temporary facilities. Right, but the, the, the modulars would be where? Would yet to be determined. We don't know is that. Is that incorporated in the cost? It's incorporated into the scope and the cost no, of the project, yes. It is. It's eligible for CFCs and all expenses associated okay. with that. Yeah. Good questions. Other questions, comments? 
Anyone make a motion? Oh, no. Thank you. We have. <laughs> well, it, okay. Rolf did it first. You want a second? I'll second. All right. Okay. We have a, a, a motion to uh, recommend both items here. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Clark? <coughs> Next item, Mr. Chairman, yes. item number three. Yes, please. In your package on page 11C, <coughs> we're going to be talking about our passenger boarding bridges. Back in the late 90s, when the Bono Concourse was built, <coughs> the eight passenger boarding bridges were attached to the building. The desert environment has been very kind in most respects from the overall structural integrity of the, of the units. However, the massive compressors and, uh, and other electronics and that have taken a beat and it's, it's time to look at rehabilitating those units. And Mr. Chairman, the firm of WSP, which was selected from that same process you participated in, that was listed as one of the items to provide the specifications in accordance with FAA criteria and to go back out in the street for a bid to be able to do that. Uh, so two things will happen in that is, number one, uh, we will design for the rehabilitation and, or refurbishment. Las Vegas International Airport currently is on Concourse D. They're actually doing the same thing right now. They have a similar desert environment, and they're replacing the components that are in need of replacement, and the structural integrity of the units is as though they've been preserved because the desert does not have the salty air and other conditions and moisture. Uh, I believe it's uh, two dozen, maybe as high as 34. I confirmed that with the, one of the companies doing the work yesterday. So we will do the same, and as you can see on the Bono concourse, appendages sticking out, all eight of them are the passenger boarding bridges. We actually have six of them are all the same units, where two of them were actually designed for wide-body aircraft. In fact, you remember Air Canada about a year and a half ago did bring in the 767. They no longer do, but we actually put them on on those bridges. Which one on those two? Uh, over here and over here, which is nice. And then what you're thinking, <coughs> we'll, we'll keep that thought. That's a good thought. Yeah. So here's these uh, massive monstrosities. They're about 55,000 pounds, and they telescope in and out. The drive gear on the end of them, you can and see, I have some more photos here. You can see the drive gear underneath the unit. These are actually aircraft tires filled with nitrogen. So they have to be able to sustain the weight. And there is actually electronic motors that drive and steer that. And there's actually a giant screw that when it's time, you've, you've been on the bridge where you're loading on an aircraft, all of a sudden it'll go down or up. It's actually, there are limit switches which senses the weight and, and lines it with the sill of the aircraft. What it's doing is adjusting it as the aircraft gets heavier, that goes down. And as the bridge gets lighter, it, it has to go up. So not, a lot of people are concerned about, here's the biggest, issue is these compressors are, Steve isn't here, uh, but uh, what is the, uh, just, there's about five different compressors in that unit, and Jeff, we talked about the noise these things admit, uh, that, remember the day we went out there and, and we found out that they're very loud, we would replace these units, they're probably about 100 grand a piece with modern technology that will consume less energy, be more efficient, and less intrusive on the ambient noise around the area. Uh, so the refurbishment will include the canopy. Here's the canopy with the limit switches in by the aircraft. All the carpeting, the inside, if necessary, the walls, but they're in absolutely pristine shape. Uh, we, if we go backwards, the rotunda itself, the rubber is old and worn, and there's different components there. The control panel itself is, is old technology. In 20 years, it's, it's older, so it will be replaced with modern technology on the inside that does a lot more, probably better service capability, likely it could be web-based so that the provider can analyze if there's an issue from a remote location. So here's the other, here's potable water, and then we have uh, the all the power cables. We need the APUs coming off the airplanes and, and, and cooling and so, so forth. So this project, members of the commission will bring them back as good as new. In the bid itself, though, we will have a bid alternate to compare the price of potentially new. 
to see if it's close enough and affordable, but we've been reassured by others in the industry and the manufacturer that by the time it is actually refurbished, it's as good as new and will be warranted for uh, a period of up to five to ten years. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Questions for Tom? Mark? So, so these are the questions that I have. Did you want to address them, Tom? Sure. Oh, so, so, so my concern, so how much is 197000 for this part? Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, I'm missing one component. Yes, yeah, the, the, half of the 197 is uh, for uh, pavement, uh, yeah, the pavement. Uh, about 99000 is appropriated for the specification development, and we have another mandatory thing. The FA requires the airport every about five years to have the pavement condition index done. Uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're familiar with that, but they go out and do a series of non-destructive and destructive testing on all of our airfield pavements. You've seen it before because I presented the map, right. and it will create a new map. So two di two disciplines. One will be the direct uh, PBB, which was about half ninety nine thousand. The other half will be for the pavement condition index. Okay, so so I have two questions. So hundred basically this is a hundred thousand dollars just for the jet bridge. So in my mind, why not buy new jet bridge? And you said, in, in the logic and the rationale, this is just a good discussion to have. Is approximately a million dollars each? Uh, no. uh, uh, look, I called the manufacturer yesterday. A new jet bridge uh, with a with a medium level of bells and whistles is about eight hundred thousand. Okay, eight hundred thousand. A rebuild yeah. unit would be about four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so oh, all okay. mm -hmm. So. What I'm a little concerned about, we're spending $100,000 for this, and then we're going to go out to bid, and we're going to go to price, and let's just say it comes back, it's $700,000, $600,000, okay? Maybe we'd rather just buy a new one for $800,000 and have a 20-year life as opposed to a five-year refurbish. So that, that's just one question to think about. And the next question is, do we really have to pay a consultant hundred thousand dollars to tell us what as opposed to just and I'm just thinking through the procurement process you just have the, the, the company that does these bridge repairs come in and do the repair they give you the estimate and do the repair do we really need a consultant telling for a hundred thousand is telling the repair bridge what they have to do when they're the experts that have to do it so these are just sort of questions I had and I know these are questions the council will have so Tom the be persuasive, I guess. I, I shall. Or. <laughs> well, if you look at our airport capital improvement program, mm -hmm. the FAA will fund 90% of these. If we were to buy <coughs> eight new bridges, we'd be talking uh, close to $7 million. And if you look at our entitlement funding from the FAA over the next five years, which includes the regional concourse gate expansion, there isn't sufficient funding to do no. Uh, the, the refurbished units are will at last at least 10 years. The warranty may be 10 years, but they'll last long beyond that. Uh, Las Vegas is one of our most uh, prolific and probably revenue-strong airports in the United States, and they found that it was well worth the investment to, to do the refurbishment. Well, do you know what they paid for refurbishment? I'm, I'm in the process of finding out. I was told by the manufacturer they can't release their specifications, and I've got to call into somebody there. Well, no, but no, we have to feel yeah, cool. we, but, but, we but can find out. No, we can get it from the airport because that's a public, public expenditure. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, and, and I'm working. But he told me on it, it was roughly 400 and less for the number. They're doing up to, th I believe he said, 34 units on Concourse D. And he said the unit cost drops. So ours is probably, theirs is probably in the 300 range. We're looking at close to. Uh, but if we don't have the money, so why don't we have it even as an option? I mean, you're ruling out that we can buy new bridges Why have it as an option? Doesn't make any sense to me. If we you're already will, saying we don't have the money, we can't well, uh, refurbishes half the cost, so it'll be about 3.2 million ish. Well, compared right, to but will that be covered by federal funds? It will, but we don't have the federal funding. When we look at our entitlement, and you have the federal funding for it. No, we, we do. We have federal funding enough for refurbishment, but when you look at our airport capital improvement program, the obligations of the airport in the future for other things 
exceeds our ability to get that entitlement funding. Okay, well, we just help me understand. So we're going to do this, we're going to go get a bid, and you're saying we don't have funding to do we it? We have funding to do the refurbishment, and that's what we budgeted, and that's what the FAA approved, but we don't have funding to do an outright replacement. Okay, so that presumes it's half the cost? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would be a good thing if it's half the cost. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, but you do have funding for it. I think that answers your question. For the refurbishment. For the refurbishment. For the refurbishment. Yeah, someone. I mean, I'm, I'm asking the question, uh, when we went through the bond issue, why that wasn't a consideration to include that at the time? Hmm? You know, I mean, to me, uh, uh, I agree, if you could get new bridges, it'd be great. If you don't have the money, it's no longer an option. Okay. Exactly. But my question then is, why didn't we consider that when we did the bond issue, we could have included it in the bond issue. That bond issue was specifically for the ticketing wing. But we could have, have but we could have included it. I, I, I'm not sure I know. Just as we included, uh, uh, well, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, it's one yeah, of the questions. Question. Yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> to me, you know, that would have made more sense. But now we're here where we are today. Right. So we have to really yeah, deal with it. If we don't have the money, then it shouldn't be an option. We should take that out as an option. Yeah. You know? So, excuse me, just for clarification, you're asking us to vote on the, the uh, study, not the actual estimate for that. Well, it will, they will prepare the specification that goes out on the street for the bid. Mm -hmm. In there, we will have the refurbishment. We can also have the alternate for new bridges. At that time, depending on the market and right. the bids. Mm -hmm. Now we know historically that it's about half the cost, mm -hmm. which is, we're talking about right. three, three and a half million dollar differential here. Operationally, is it possible, on your experience, to just bypass the study and, and get estimates? No, we can't. See it. Because it's an FA grant, we have to provide a fair and open competition. No, 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 he's talking about without doing no. the like the not bid, not bid, not bid. Just going to the vendor, doing a bid with the vendors. Well, the we do not have the internal expertise. The, the FAA has a lot of criteria in how we how we do this. Well, they have to do it based on FAA criteria. And again, yeah. I think the example is you know if you're gonna you need a new air conditioner for your house, you call air conditioner contractor and he does it and puts it in as opposed to having a consultant tell you what you need and then the air conditioner. So I guess that's the question that disconnect. If you could explain why we can't go that route. Right. Well, the the scope of the work isn't telling us what we need. We determined we need to do something with the PBBs. They're designing the full rehabilitation specifications, the specifications for the rotunda rebuild, what circuit panel needs to be put in. The, spec, uh, the specs have to be very detailed when it hits the street so that the providers are not going to short change anything. It's no different than any specification. Yeah, but, but going back to David's point, so why don't we contact Las Vegas and say, who did this? Come on out. They already did it. But we still have to design our specifications that are unique to mm -hmm. the Palm Springs International Airport. Why? The PBBs are different? They, they, are. They, they, they are different. Mm -hmm. Chances are there's a lot of wide body and so forth, but we have unique needs. The, the Las Vegas units may or may not have had certain components, and what they will involve the consultant to do is to site visit and spend the time to break down each unit's unique needs so we don't overspend or underspend on the rehabilitation. Have we talked to Phoenix or Tucson to see what they're doing? Well, that's part of the job of the consultant is to do the analysis with the manufacturer as to what components need to be replaced. Why, why do the consultants have to do it? Why can't we do that? Uh, I can't recontact we, Phoenix. Well, we, we can, but yeah, by, yeah, yeah, by the end of the day, we do not have the in-house expertise mm -hmm. to develop a specification, nor would we want to attempt well, that. Let me tell that's the question. Does the specification have to be developed? Yes. Or there are companies that do jet bridges, so they know what's required. So they're going to come in and look at it and say, okay, this is what's required, this is your cost, like a bid. And most so without the consultant doing $100,000 worth of design work, that, that's the only question. Yeah, it, well, the problem with that is from a procurement process, there's only, only so many providers in the industry. If we go to the manufacturer to help us de design a spec, that's a conflict of interest, and they cannot bid in on the project. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. We don't 
have a spec. The burden is on the contractor to tell us what it takes to refurbish the bridge. Well, there's three manufacturers, more, uh, and they all have a different bridge. They all have different modes of bridge. Some have different drive systems, some have different panels. The specific unit here in a, in a refurbishment has to have the so, so original the only, the only company that can do the refurbishment is the original company that built it? But we have identified them and about two or three others that are side companies that specialize in the maintenance and the refurbishment. So there has to be a competitive bid. We believe strongly that the $99,000 spent is going to protect us in the long run. The liability the interface between these units and the aircraft, if if it's not done right and an aircraft that's a $65 million aircraft is damaged and delayed and put out of service for five weeks because of the right components were, weren't replaced, we could, our liability, our risk assessment is, is going to go up. Jan, can you weigh in on that? Um, I'm not sure about the liability issue. Um, that the liability would ultimately go to the contractor. Is that what you're talking about? Well, that was my point is we hire a professional firm that knows the FAA guidelines. They design the specs in accordance with that. So if there is a future incident, uh, it wasn't something we as the owner were responsible for. It would have been more in the, the refurbishment of the units. Um, me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about liability clauses and you know, the acceptability of what would appear to be a very large liability on, on, on the part of um, the, the group that's specifying and the group that's constructing. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. the, well, the question, uh, just listening to the conversation, really the question that I hear coming is can we just simply skip the process and go straight to the refurbishment or do we have to do this? I mean, that's really what it comes down to the question. One more comment, and then we're going to need to draw this to a close so, and make a decision. I have to agree with Mr. Nolan. The problem is if you go straight to the contractors and say, look, we have eight bridges, we need them refurbished, getting those bids and then it's based on low bid, you know, some guy may say, oh, I can just leave that, that certain pump or certain mm -hmm. thing here and... I mean, trying to compare the final bids of apples and oranges, you're going to have a tremendous problem. Right. And added cost. And at, at a cost, and you're not sure you're getting what you want. Mm -hmm. At least, I, you know, I really hate paying consultants. But we're talking about something that's, you know, eight or $9,000 per bridge. Uh, but you will have a standard list of specifications so when the contractors come in, they're all bidding on the right. same thing. You're going to replace this wire, you're going to replace this pump, mm -hmm. you're going to replace this carpeting. And it's going to be easier for the city and the airport to, des to decide whether we go with A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. so, so, Mr. Chairman, I would agree that that is a very persuasive argument. Right. That, that makes sense. So but I think what I, we need, I need to do at a minimum, though, before we actually do this with council, so you have a satisfaction, is that Let's just get some data on what a new bridge is versus the refurbished. Because if in the end the refurbished is going to be a couple hundred thousand dollars difference, maybe we'd rather have new bridges. Okay. So uh, at they least we'll, at data. least we can get that. We, I have the data. Eight hundred versus four hundred. Yeah, yeah, we provided that yesterday. It. it was half the cost. Yesterday the I called them. That was from Phoenix. That was from the manufacturer that actually built the units that they know from the industry. So, so how did we get to eight million? But when one is eight hundred thousand, eight hundred times eight would be six point four million. Yeah. And some incidentals. And we don't have that money. Is what you're saying? In the, if you look at our long-term ACIP, we're, we're not quite sure how we would pay for a gate expansion with the regional at this point. So that three and a half million could pay for a lot more in the bay claim a refurbishment. And but we do have the funding to cover the refurbishment. Yes, we do. Yeah. And that's the difference, John. Would, would, would the 99000 to WSP include inspection services during construction? Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. They'll, they'll do visits and make sure that the widget put into the air is within the spec. And, and just for clarification, we don't have an engineer or technical person in-house to assist with specification and to follow up and to verify 
what the vendor is. We don't have the expertise. We don't have the correct. We don't have the expertise. Mm -hmm. right. We know enough to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Although we are yeah. in the process of hiring the engineer's position that will give us some expertise in these areas yes. going forward. Right. Okay. All right, I think we're down to the point. I think we've exhausted the discussion. There were very good points mm -hmm. made on both sides, but I think the clarification um, in terms of having, uh, as we go out to bid, the same specifications, because I can see others doing shortcut it out. Does anyone want to make a motion based on the recommendations here in our conversation to move forward? Okay. I move that we move forward with the recommendation on our consultant. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? So are we, are we, just want to be clear that motion, are we ruling out new jet bridges or will the consultant come, eventually come back and say, well, uh, you really need new bridges and you've got to find the money? At the time of the bid, there will be a bid alternate that says, what would it cost for new? Yeah. So that will be a, a, another year or so, year away. At that time, if something magically occurs fiscally inside and we say, well, my gosh, we could, we could buy Is that two more. Uh, that would be that the actual bid include an alternate for mm -hmm. the pricing of a new, so that if our yeah. fiscal right. position right. changes, that we can do that. Okay. Good point. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? None. Okay. Thank you, Tom. That was a very good discussion. Thank you, David, too, for bringing up these points as well. Thank you. Uh, we move on now to the executive director and staff reports. Tom? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The ticketing project, long-awaited, funded, bid award is underway, and the key component of it is the baggage handling system, which takes six to nine months lead time. So the company from Louisville was out here the other day under the general contractor looking at that. The original phasing of the program was centering on solely calendar year 2020, but the contractor indicates that there could be some uh, significant potential protections against any concerns about timing next year if they could do some other work prior to that. We're evaluating that very closely. So that's a great project underway. The aircraft rescue and firefighting trucks are about to go out to bid. Ulysses, we're... Yes. Yeah. So those, those new vehicles are going to go out on the street and we'll get that as well. Other projects that are pending is uh, the checkpoint project in our initiative to expand that checkpoint to help address 15% uh, year-over-year growth. Unfortunately, during the bid for the major ticketing project, the price that the contractor gave us was more than two times the estimate. Mm. And fiscally, that was not acceptable. Uh, we had to hit the street again and miraculously did get something out on the street. The bids are back on September 19th. We are keeping our fingers crossed that the bids come in, in in an affordable posture so we can attempt to get that done yet this year before January. So you have to come on That'd that. Good. Uh, other than that, uh, we, are, we are preparing for season. And we'll get to it uh, in terms of the, uh, actually Tom's referred to it already, the growth that we're experiencing already in passengers. We continue, if you looked at that, that report, it continues to increase. Uh, any commissioner requests and reports? I have a request. Yes, sir. Um, we, we talked about the insurance in the airport, which will spend $300,000. Is it possible, uh, Dr. Reddy, to share the risk assessment provided by the insurance provider, so we understand how they've assessed the risks good, here. Good yeah. request. Sure. Thank you. Do that. What I can do is the uh, best way to disseminate that is I'll send it to the director, and mm -hmm. you can get it to the commission. right. That'd be helpful. Yeah. Okay. That's very good. Very good. Any other commissioner requests? Report of city council items. Those should all to. be in your package? Pardon me? Those are all in your package? They are in the package? Yeah, so... Uh, Dave, you want to highlight what, what, yeah, what What's here, they're all on the agenda, they're on the agenda for next week. Um, we, we changed the order of the, the council meeting, so that's why it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's next week. Okay, uh, all right. And you can go through other things that we did at the very top that we talked about, the, the uh, uh, seating acquisition. That was what was outstanding with a couple of other things. Um, so, anybody have any questions 
on any of the city council I, I mean, they, they have supported what we wanted to do to move forward. There's not, nothing. They were all unanimously supportive as affecting the city, I mean, the airport. All right, do we have any um, correspondence? No correspondence. Um, receive and file the airline activity report. That was, you have us passed out. Pardon me? Yeah. Yeah, you did, they were at your chairs when you came in. Any questions? <coughs> Other than the activity continues to increase. I mean, it's just, uh, even I was impressed. Um, even during the summer, from the months of June and July, it was a significant increase as well. So yes. we're going to have to follow this trend in terms of the impact on the airport and the services that we provide. Any, no other questions uh, on that? Is there any idea when Contour Airlines starting service? I mean, which? Contour Airlines? Next Sacramento? Monday, I think it is. Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah, Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah, Sacramento. Yeah, I, the Contour Airlines, some of you came to that event uh, um, when we launched it. They begin their flights uh, on Monday, I believe it is. Um, because I'm very anxious to start thinking because I go to Sacramento. It's, it's Dick, pardon me? Three times a week or No, no, it's, it's daily. daily. It is daily. daily. It's one flight, they leave, Sa the problem is, um, in terms of just timing, because they need to do a turnaround, it leaves Sacramento, I think around 10.30 in the morning, and then it goes back to Sacramento around 1.30 in the afternoon. Don't quote me on the times, that was my recollection, it was in that time frame. And I, personally, I have to go up the day before and do late afternoon meetings and evenings, so it's going to be very helpful for me to get up there because I spend the night many, many times. I go on average two, two times a month to Sacramento, so I'm anxious to, to try them out. So those of you who didn't have a chance to come to that event, uh, we had a chance to get onto the plane while it was on the runway. Mm -hmm. Tarmac, um, it's, uh, it's uh, 30 seats. It's all like first class seating, and uh, I think it's very exciting, and people in... I don't know about you, but the things that I, the comments I received more than anything else is, can we please get some type of flight to Sacramento? So we should see how it goes. Um, any other comments? Yes, sir, Kevin. Tom, with the uh, increase across not only during the season but the summer, in terms of forecast, are the airlines forecasting or adding more flights? to increase just the capacity moving forward for season? Well, there's an interesting trend that we're analyzing right now, but some of the airlines are down-gauging the size of the aircraft and actually utilizing the regional aircraft more to get more frequency as opposed to uh, larger aircraft. So there's a, somewhat of a dynamic, dynamic shift going on between the Bono and over to the regional, and the, I think the net results are going to be more seats. Good. Can I ask just a question? Are the jetways able to go to the regional jets, like larger airports? Are they able to function? As Our as airport airports? capital improvement program, which is viewed annually by the commission, looks at a gate expansion at the regional concourse, and I was alluding to that. We still are trying to figure out how to pay for it, and it's going to be needed. At that point, we need to introduce passenger boarding bridges from the ground loading level up to, to jets there because of the growth expectations. So, and when that time comes, are we revisiting gate one or is gate one dead? I, I, I think gate one's going to have to play a role at some point in time in this airport. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree. Well, it is, if there's no further business of the commission, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. There's a reminder that the noise committee is meeting immediately after uh, we adjourn, and following the noise committee is the marketing committee. And very quickly, Gerald Adams is asked to be added to the marketing. So we've got an additional uh, Peter, Peter's chair of that committee. Paul Badillo has, is, we're going to assign both to marketing as well as to budget. David, I think you're already on marketing. Correct. So you're already set on that. Um, so are there any other questions or thoughts before we move into the noise committee? <coughs> move to adjourn. Second, is there? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We are adjourned. Thank you. This Thank you for discussion. your discussion. Thank you very much. So the New York Noise Committee will start in about two minutes. And Jeff, you're, you're the chair of the Noise Committee, so you take over. I just remember the committee.